Hi there beautiful souls. If you ask an average human what he or she is doing, she or he will tell you that they are on their way to go somewhere, to arrive somewhere, and that goal is usually in the future. This podcast is about freeing your mind from everything. It is about creating freedom instantly. If you would like to download this um, podcast instead of watching it on YouTube, you can follow the link in the description and download the mp3 file. Just like with everything, don't start this podcast agitated in need of uh, distractions, in need of stress input, and therefore it's important to arrive where you are in the present moment Arrive right here, right now, in your body. Feel your body. Take a look around where you are. Use your senses. Where are you? What do you hear? What do you smell? Is there a taste? And how do your clothes feel? And what else do you feel? Arrive fully right here, right now. Take a deep breath. And let it all go. Most people want freedom in their life, especially when you're ill. Freedom is the thing you want. But who wants freedom? I think that is an essential question. And it is someone that is imprisoned. Imprisoned by what? By your body? By life? Or maybe by your own mind? I have made in the past year a podcast about the 12-step circle of disease from where you go from one thought to a belief to a perception that colors your experience and then all the way up to chronic diseases and fatal diseases and symptoms but the point is in the podcast that your reality is based upon your filter and your filter is created in your mind you see the world the way you think it. First there is a thought and then it colors your perception. Most people that are ill have created a perception that they need to deal with the illness and they think they have got some form of control. There is that word. I come back to that later. Control. But from the point of view from the illness you're trying to solve the problem by what created the problem. Instead, you need to rise above it. Free your mind. You have to let it all go, Neil. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Free your mind. People wanted freedom long before they started to get sick. I wanted freedom long before. In fact, everything I did was to arrive somewhere in the future, to arrive at freedom. But in the meantime, it's the very same thing that is keeping us stuck and not experiencing freedom. When I'm on the way to freedom, the energy of freedom in my life is zero. But when I implement a few hours of freedom every day, I can let the energy of freedom grow in my life. So the question is, what is holding you back? And why don't you trust enough to implement freedom as of this moment? And why can't you do it when you are ill? I had a profound change in my life in the year, the beginning of the year 2020. I've had a lot of anger inside of me and it all came out and I was shivering and shaking and from that moment on I felt different from that moment on I connected with my soul the essence of who I am but something more dramatic changed as well the way I perceived other people the way I looked at them the way I can feel them What I feel in everybody is pain, self-hatred. What I also feel is a beautiful soul. 
the essence of who you are. You are pure beauty, pure life, the universe itself glazing through your eyes. And at the same time, you're lost because you're trying to find yourself outside of yourself, just like people are finding freedom in the future. And to deal with that pain and, 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 and lots of other pains that I talk about in other podcasts, people put a mask over their faces, over their whole appearance. Sometimes it's very visible. You see someone suffering, someone talks to them, and all of a sudden you see a fake smile and a personality coming up, a fake persona. And all I feel at that moment is pain, whereas that person is trying to survive and trying to maintain a mask of who they're not at that moment. But what if that mask is as well the underway energy of trying to arrive? But every time you put it on, you give yourself the message of unworthiness. You give yourself the message of loneliness because you do not look at yourself. And lots of emotions can come up that are in your body. Fear, anger, sadness. Suppressed sadness is uh, supposedly leading towards depression. Suppressed anger is supposedly leading to chronic pain or fibromyalgia and suppressed fear might lead, according to my theory, to fatigue. And the worse you feel, unconsciously, because you choose to zone out and choose to distract yourself from the way you are and the way you feel, the worse you'll get. This is a negative spiral. And since you had a point in your life where your coping mechanisms of trying to put the mask on worked for you. You probably think, or probably automatically in your subconscious and unconscious mind, want to do the same coping strategy over and over and over again. And this is where my coaching differentiates from other people who are coaching. In fact, I'm at this moment uh, living in a community with several coaches, and all I see what they're doing is spiritual, or maybe not so spiritual, but a form of bypassing, bypassing who they are and bypassing someone else's emotions because we're so used to it that some of these emotions are bad. But if you choose to believe that an emotion is bad, that is because a thought has been implemented in your mind. Imagine you can implement thoughts in people's minds. What can you do with that? Imagine how much control you can get if you color the filters of people in society. And for everyone who has been under hypnosis, you know exactly what I talk about. Because you realize the truth. And the truth is, you were already under hypnosis. So I keep talking about coping mechanisms. And a coping mechanism is something you do to avoid feeling. So it is a distraction. And everything you do might be a coping mechanism. Some are very obvious, like pleasing or uh, cleaning excessively. Some are extreme, like OCDs. And some are very subtle. And for some people, like the way I was, my coping mechanisms were almost invisible. And I was very good at showing the world a different picture of myself a picture of a guy who is in control. Here is that word. Control. Control is as well something. Something weird. Control means stress. Control means the opposite of letting go. And everybody wants control. Because they've got the feeling that they are not in control. And why is that? Maybe it has something to do with our programming. So the purpose of these coping mechanisms are to never arrive. It is always to remain looking for something outside of yourself in the future, never in the present moment. And therefore, once you achieve your goals, you achieve something, you automatically have the, uh, the need to keep distracting yourself because when you stop, you arrive at where you are, at yourself. 
and that is not good because then you get confronted with all your negative buildup of feelings so you always need to be distracted so the purpose of trying to reach something is to never reach it it is to distract yourself and that is a painful truth a painful consequence of coping so you will always be in the need for a next thing to reach out for and if you look for advertisements or commercials you can see how they use hypnosis programming language to let people uh, come up with the urge of another coping mechanism of another goal of another temporary feeling of feeling good but the opposite is truth it is the opposite it is making you feel bad because you're walking away from yourself but you do not notice that because when you stop you of course get firstly confronted with your own feelings sometimes i make jokes about this when people are always in need for the next project marriage children a new bathroom a holiday a new house a new job a better income but as alan watts said you will always be looking for the very next thing in life and the more you fill your mind the less open mind you are because an open mind is an empty mind and how can you empty your mind is it just meditation or is the desire of having an empty mind holding you from the experience of an empty mind and in the meantime the world is full of people who are who actually feel bad feel unworthy feel that there is a lack and they're trying to reach the opposite but they cannot get it from themselves anymore and therefore they are trying to get it from other people and thus most coping mechanisms that involve other people are actually manipulation techniques and this also means that you do not respect the other human or person and that is also logical because you do not respect yourself you do not see yourself and therefore you cannot see the other human and your desires then although you might be pleasing someone is a very selfish act and the worst thing as well is that the other human or person that is involved in this symbiotic codependent relationship that you're forming with almost everyone in your environment has nothing to give you because they are also trying to get it from maybe you or maybe not sometimes when you when people can't really get their desires met via someone they can project all their negativity on someone else as well so there are lots of humans interacting with each other who cannot see each other and one thing that particularly hurts me is something that people do not really think about because it's very normal but it is makeup it is trying to hide who you are at the same time it's a literal mask that you're putting on yourself and i know as a man i don't do this and i don't i've never done this but i see it in women with chronic fatigue syndrome as well and they have only like one hour of, of energy during the day where and, and they need they want to get out of the house but first they need to do makeup on their face and the more i feel other people the more i completely know what they're feeling and what they're thinking the more it hurts to see makeup and the uglier i think that it looks people that it makes people look like sometimes when women have a lot of makeup and and i see them without makeup i always feel a relief i can see them again they want to show themselves again true beauty is not in makeup but is in showing who you really are and reconnecting with yourself so instead of showing ourselves to the world we are hiding under a mask and we show an image an image of who we want to be but also an image that is the opposite of who we are and an image that is also born out of trauma and trauma is unresolved emotions that means a traumatic event doesn't have to be trauma if you process it rightly and if you have the tools to deal with it you don't develop a trauma 
that also means that the smallest emotional thing that you do not uh, process is a trauma. And the way that the world is programming us, programming you via advertisements, via school, via movies, via newspapers, via events, they are not here by accident. It is all a way of programming because as long as you need a coping distraction, you can be a customer. And if you get ill, you are also a customer. Traumas are also passed over in family lines. You're not really listening to your parents, but you're watching them and you start doing the same. And if they are not unable to deal with their emotions, they are also unable with, to, to deal with your emotions. So you become unable to deal with your own emotion and you can pass that along. Generational trauma. Trauma is always biggest in the, the generation who is at war and they pass it along to the second generation and they pass it along to the third generation. And it takes approximately seven generations to heal from a traumatic event or unless someone is willing to do the work and willing to change. And if you look at wars and how they are advertised, you already know that something is going on right now. Something is going terribly wrong here because humans do not want to go to war. You have to trick them. You have to trick them into attacking someone else. And this is where the media comes in as well. Because all of the, the things that form our lives, think about the media, the pharmaceutical industry, the schooling industry, the fashion industry, it's only there because of trauma. And it serves to create trauma and more distractions. And when we talk about the pharmaceutical industry, uh, this industry deals with a lot of, uh, of, of human pain, so to speak. Losing people, uh, having uh, pain yourself, getting sick or losing a loved one and trying to avoid the, someone from dying, which is also a very egoic purpose, of course, because you don't want someone to die because you don't want to deal with the pain of losing them. And there's a, has built a whole business around this, uh, especially from the early 1900s when David Rockefeller from the oil industry starting to infiltrate the health industry by creating uh, medicines based from oil, which are probably only uh, about uh, dealing with symptoms, but not really healing on a deeper level. And as humans, we are so strong, actually. When we find our balance, our peace, our alignment again, we are so strong that we can let miracles happen. And we don't really need lots of medicines and, and drugs that suppress our symptoms or make us a lifelong customer to someone else. Make us as well enslaved. Because everything you need or everything you own, owns you in the end. And this is particularly true when you look at the financial system, what is based on debt. If you really start to unravel the financial system that we're living in, you see it is A, the same people owning it, and B, it is a system of enslavement. But you were already enslaved by yourself, by your thinking mind, by your uh, approaches to reach something in the future, or your, um, your way of dealing with problems by trying to fight the problems and therefore remain the problems, let, that, let them remain. So you were already a slave and the physical world is just a representation of your inner world, as within, so without. And this counts almost for everything, but it is so painful to look at these things that I, most people would rather avoid this and they rather want to be a lifelong customer and they want to be a slave. So science tells you uh, all kinds of things and we look at scientists as the new priests, a new religion. Yet sometimes it seems like they're telling something different almost every week. There is another research, there is another research. 
And people like me, for example, or more famous people, when they tell you a different message, you know, people ask for their uh, credentials. You know, where is your credential? Yes, but I mean, the credentials that you can get from the universities, they are also owned by the same people and they also have an interest, a financial interest or an interest, an interest in keeping you asleep, keeping you away from your true power. And I, I don't want to mean this negative, like being a conspiracy theory or something. But I think this is what life really is. There are forces trying to keep you away from your power and it is your job to go back to yourself and to center yourself in yourself and align yourself with your purpose. And if you look at these scientific reports, you see that there are actually, when you look back and on all their assumptions, but where they're starting their research from, you can see that they're all starting in a very limited way, very limited perceptions that are also based from the late 1800s, early 1900s, where they thought that life was still separate from each other, where they didn't really know yet that we're living in a hologram. And there is a beautiful uh, fragment in Missing Links with Greg Braden. These are the six perennial questions. If you were raised in the West, and if you were educated in the West in the last 150 years, you as I have been imbued with a story. And it is a scientific story that says the following. It says that the origin of life is completely random. The origin of human life is completely random. Our relationship to our bodies, we're told that we are separate from our bodies and pretty much powerless to do anything when it comes to the condition of healing in our bodies. And that's why we need a third party. That's why we need the intervention of a medical professional to help us because we have that experience, because we have that belief. The relationship to the world around us, pretty much the same answer. We've been led to believe that we're separate from our world and pretty much powerless when it comes to influence and the peace and cooperation, whether it's in our families or our communities or between nations. Our relationship to our past, we have been taught that civilization happened once, it began 5,000 years ago, and we are the pinnacle of that sophistication. And we have been taught, number six, that nature, the fundamental rule of nature, is actually based upon competition, conflict, and struggle. These are the principles of the world that we see today. New discoveries have now overturned every single one of these beliefs. Every single one of the beliefs that you see on the left-hand side of your screen is now proven in peer-reviewed science to be scientifically false. So this isn't my opinion, it's not my theory, it's not my hypothesis, this is based in peer-reviewed science. What we now know is that these false assumptions of science are at the root, the foundation of many of the extremes that we're seeing in our lives, in our world today. So there are all these authorities in life that are, have the goal to keep you away from your power. And they wear fancy costumes, they have fancy titles, and they have fancy incomes. And when you go through a, a process of uh, initiating yourself in such a field, let's say, uh, a scientist for example you've done you've sacrificed a lot of your years to arrive somewhere in the future this has also been a brainwashing pro a pro process and at the same time you are you like your new standards you like your new credentials and your new titles and your new costumes but is it really true i don't think so when I had in 2013 a mystical uh, moment, a mystical experience, I realized that we are living in a hologram. And for many years I had the question, do I really exist? Because I was doubting the very essence of, of life and myself at that moment. But there was such a build-up of belief systems and programs in my life that I actually needed this illness of chronic fatigue syndrome to get rid of everything that I thought thought that I was, which is very painful. I mean, I had to look through all my pains 
everything that I thought, all the emotions that were suppressed, it all turned out to be not true. It all turned out to be a lie. And I, as a reward, got my health back. But it wasn't easy. And now, nowadays, science is also uh, proving that we're actually living in sort of a simulation. We're living in a hologram. And there are there is truth on very different levels. And one truth might be true on a certain level of consciousness, but it might be a lie in another level of consciousness. And the complete truth is unspeakable. And therefore, it's almost un, we are almost unable to say it. We go to the realm of poets, poets and musicians, and maybe all they do at that moment is try to get us out of our minds and get us in the present moment, get us in touch with our body, get us back to our senses when we feel, because we need to get out of the mind first, and then we need to get into the physical realm secondly, and then third, we can move beyond it. We can connect with our souls and everything. And many others have realized this before, and they started to become like a spiritual guru or spiritual master, um, having lots of followers. And what they did is that they realized some part of the truth and tried to form as well an egoic personality around it. So the, the follower and the, and the guru, they were actually depending on each other in a symbiotic relationship. But at the same time, they had two lives. They had one life of meditation and withdrawing, withdrawing themselves from life. And another was their life. And these worlds couldn't be possibly be further away from each other. And I think that is where it went wrong. A lot of spiritual awakened people live lives as if this life is not important, as if it is some sort of way that we have to overcome. We have to overcome our negative things because life is not real or something like that. It's just an illusion. But I don't think that is the way. What I'm offering you is a perspective. Everything I do is about perspective. Because we need to raise your consciousness. We need to raise your awareness. So what I'm offering you is the perspective of integrating those two lives at the same time. So you don't have to uh, keep doing stuff you don't want to do. Like for example, a job you hate or being together in a marriage because of fear. Or anything like that. I want you to align and thus heal in your current lifetime, in your pre in your body, and as well le leading the life that represents that. And maybe that is where lots of gurus go wrong, because they still have the fear inside of themselves to do what they actually want, and therefore they can become indifferent, indifferent about life. And you see that lots of gurus needed alone time afterward because they were exhausted. They were still hiding behind the mask, the mask of the teacher in this case. And while you're integrating this wisdom in your life, you must remember that life was just a projection from your inner state and that you needed to work on your inner things first. Maybe 90% of the work is internal. At least that's my assumption or my estimation. So let's integrate ourselves first. And every time you rejected a part of yourself, let's say the part that wants freedom, let's say the part that is in fear, you fragmented a part of yourself and you denied a part of who you really are. Now it is key to integrate all these aspects of who you are. And I won't go much into detail uh, about it in this podcast, but in the 12th module of the Alignment Recovery Program on my website, you can find uh, lots of tips and tools to integrate, part of, integrate parts of yourself. As I, for example, talk about integrated anger that is supposed to uh, put, hold me on my, on my path, so to speak. But it is also integrated fear. Because in order to step into your purpose of life, of your path of alignment, you need to have felt and dealt with your fear. And only on the other side of that spectrum can you find trust. Trust happens by feeling fear. 
And if it is fear that is preventing you from stepping into your the life that you want and is always being underway, then it needs to be felt. It needs to be integrated. And it is okay to be fearful. We don't need to completely get rid of our feelings because although you get rid of the feeling, it, it becomes a shadow. It still becomes a part of you, but you cannot see it anymore. And therefore, it is sometimes so hard to look at your own shadows. You really need a coach for that. And how these um, these these aspects that are in the dark of yourself are also uh, needing coping mechanisms where you are unaware of to get something probably in the future, to avoid the feeling that is inside of you. Let's say fear. If you don't feel it, you what what do you want then? Um, at that moment, you're probably fearless about trying to reach a place of safety in the future. So you're trying to be bold, but at the same time, you're, you're feeding the fear and the fear of not living the life that you want becomes bigger and bigger and bigger because that is the energy that you're working with. So instead, we need to start small with the energy of freedom. Step by step, what can you do today? If there is one hour of freedom today, what would it be? How would your ideal life look like? And bring it to the present moment. Feel the fear and do it anyway. And then you might ask yourself, what is my motivation behind doing all of this? Do I want something from you? I mean, you probably feel that way because everybody wants something from you. And of course, we're all living in a dependent system on each other. And I cannot live without money. Uh, Well, I I can try, but let's see how far I can get. But my goal is to set you you free and let you be you. The one that I already felt underneath all your masks and layers and coping. And let's see what's happening then. I mean, a lot of things will happen, of course. And I'm just curious. I want to see it evolve. I want to see your energy grow. And as well, Greg Braden and Joe Dispenza, they said, like, normally you can emit someone's energy five feet apart uh, from your body. That is like the official scientific way. But hold on a second. The, uh, The device that measured it was only going five feet apart from you. Yeah. In fact... The stronger you get, the more aligned you are, your energy can reach hundreds or thousands of meters away from you. And this energy field that you're emitting is is having an influence on the environment. So, the law of attraction. hmm? But the law of attraction has got it wrong, in a way. Because the law of attraction is basically telling that it is okay to need stuff but those stuff that you needed it was based on a false feeling of arriving somewhere in the future I am safe when I have a car so I'm going to visualize a car but this energy is about I don't need anything because everything that I want or need will come to me at this moment I am free I don't have a house to pay for I don't have a lot of stuff I can move tomorrow I am free to do whatever I want. And if you also have then that integrated anger that is letting you stay on your own path, then you become free. You can do whatever you want and your health will improve dramatically because if you still think that there is something wrong with you, like let's say a virus or brain damage, you're still in the energy of trying to solve the problem inside of the problem. But the reality is, there is no problem. Like in the hologram, in the hologram, there aren't really tables. There aren't really bodies. And you can only see like a small spectrum of the light. But there is so much more. And when you dive into it, you see that it all contains energy and empty, and empty, uh, empty spaces. That it is... The body is like 99.9% or something, if I think about it, just emptiness. And that there is energy waves moving all the time to keep your body solid for your eyes. So you appear solid, like the table appears solid. 
but it isn't the case. It's just what our senses do. And we perceive life through our senses. We think that what we experience by our senses is real. But it is also, it is not just unreal, it is also colored by the beliefs that we are having and the filter that we look through life through, which is probably for most of us based on a need to arrive somewhere in the future. A perception of lack does. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. So now you see, not only are we living in an illusion, our bodies are illusions, we ourselves are illusions, and we create with our mind illusions inside of illusions inside of illusions inside of illusions. And the more you do that, the less the energy can flow. So I need you to break free from your thoughts, from your beliefs, from your coping mechanisms, from your emotions that are still inside of you as long as you don't allow them. A feeling is there because it needs to be felt, nothing more. And once you feel it, it goes. And it doesn't go because you want it to go. It goes because you allow it. Because everything you resist persists and everything you feel disappears. So feel your illness as well. Feel it. Feel how miserable you are feeling right now. And only then can it disappear. Allow it completely. Stop the resistance. Stop the control. There is that word again. Control. Control is stress. Control is the opposite of letting go. Control is creating disease. Control is what this world is about. To control you with your perceptions via lots and lots of hypnosis techniques so that you eventually forget that you are in a very, very, very deep sleep. And it's still probably a program to, to deal with life in a certain way, like the coping mechanisms that we have. But I want you to remember this scene from The Matrix. And what you see that he's basically saying, no, no, I don't join in any longer. And he moves above the problem, just like you can do. I like to differentiate between healing and curing. We can do the work to become whole, which is at the, at the root definition of the word to heal, is to become whole. We can become whole and perhaps still be sick. We can become whole and perhaps even die. But what I have seen over and over and experienced in myself is if we embark upon that journey to become whole, then we make the body ripe for miracles. And if cure is sort of aligned with divine will, if you want to use such terms, then we've kind of laid the foundation. And perhaps the cure itself is a kind of grace that we can't even take credit for. Allow yourself to reintegrate the beauty of who you are. The beauty that I feel, the beauty that is so extremely beautiful and so unique as well. That's what I wish for you. I wish you to be free. Have a beautiful day, everyone. And thanks for listening. Bye.